Day 32, and I have to admit these last few days have been like an absolute huge roller coaster. The other night we went out for tea with a couple of um, really good friends, Rob and Jonathan, had an absolute awesome meal, and I just felt so alive. And I felt so alive because we weren't talking about breast cancer or anything about me, it was just about all of us, and we just got on and had such a great night, and I came out of there feeling just absolutely normal for once. And it was just great to get on and have a meal with great guys, and just, it was just great, and it was just a bit of a highlight this week. So it really just has been a roller coaster these last few days. The other night Maddie's machine alarmed six times and at first I thought it was a rough night because I got up three times to it and then when in the morning Tom said, oh actually no mum I got up to it three times and I kind of like thought yeah right three times is a pretty huge amount six times a year but when I did check her machine in the morning you know he had it had alarmed off six times so we had this really rough week of Maddie's machine alarming horrendously. So when I went to the GPs and I said to them oh look I said to him hey look you know have a look at my scar what do you reckon is it healing okay? what do you think about this? Do you think I'm not, you know, pulling fluid anywhere? And he said to me, oh, what does the hospital say? And I said, well, I really haven't been back to hospital since I've had my drain out. And he said, well, what do you mean? And I say, well, I just really haven't. Um, and they said to me, oh, give us a ring if you need us. And I haven't really needed them, so I haven't really needed to give them a ring, but I also kind of, like, haven't really known if how my scar looks is normal or fine. And he said, well, what do you mean you didn't, haven't seen them? And like I said, oh, well, I haven't. So he checked me all out and said, oh, OK, but... He was quite keen for me to catch up with the hospital nurses and make sure who see it all the time that it was looking all okay. But um, because apparently oncology deals with the oncology side of things and if I have issues with where my breast was, then I speak to the breast care nurses. So I sometimes I feel like because I've split both public and private and I've gone private with all my consultations and just doing public for treatment, sometimes I do feel like a bit like I've fallen through the gaps a bit. The other day I spent the morning at a child and youth forum. That's one of, part of one of my roles as being the chair for the CDHB Family Advisory Council and it was just absolutely fantastic. It's the first time I've been able to attend a child and youth forum um, since being diagnosed and it was great to get out there, use my brain, start networking and catch up with other like-minded medical professionals. And then in the afternoon I was interviewing um, candidates possible candidates for, for our um, council, for some staff reps and things. And I came away that night feeling totally alive and, and that I was Sarah, chair of the CDHB Family Advisory Council, not Sarah, oh, she's the one with breast cancer. And it just felt great to be doing something normal, doing something I love and, and giving back, it was great. I've been going to physio lately on my calf muscle and the first few sessions of physio, you know, didn't really do much and it has been weighing quite heavily on my mind. Oh heck, you know, actually maybe I've got cancer in the in the bone now. And it has been sitting there thinking, oh. So anyway, off the, I went off to the GPs the other day and had some blood tests done. Because apparently if you have got secondary cancer elsewhere, your liver function will be off. So he did some blood tests for me. And, and it was great to know that they all came back normal and, and already, you know, the whole power of the mind thing. My physio seems to be working on my calf muscle and getting better. So that, that was just such a relief because it was playing heavily on my mind. Um, it's, it's the night before I met the oncologist and all the oncology here in Christchurch. And how do I feel about it? Well, you know what, I really don't care. Does that head in the sand? I really feel that way. I just feel this is just all too much right now. And it's kind of like I'm really hoping that this guy I meet tomorrow is going to say to me, hey, Sarah, this is what you need to do. You need to turn up on this day and you need to do this, this and this and <clears throat> maybe that. and that's what I'm really hoping for. I'm really hoping for that tomorrow I don't turn up there and this guy says, now what would you like to do? Because probably I'd tell him actually walk out this door and just get on with life and not worry about you. But um, that's just not reality. I do have to face this head on, but right now I just really don't want to. I really just want to get on and do my family and other stuff. This is really actually really pissing me off if the truth be known.